Hello guys, this is Aykut Bozkurt and today I am going to uh, show you a utility which has been asked uh, in the YouTube comments section uh, and uh, lots of people are wondering uh, how I do this, how I do that and uh, so many questions raised and uh, I will answer them uh, once and for all and uh, today uh, I will show you the utility that I am using all the time which is a great one I promise you will like it and um, it was coded by an Italian uh, coder uh, and his github page is here and uh, unfortunately the utility is not um, in his repository as far as I can see and um, the utility um, was written by Claudio and thank you very much Claudio uh, I'm sure you will watch this video and um, I appreciate that and uh, he has written this utility um, uh, with my um, suggestions and uh, some feature requests and um, it's doing its job really really good uh, uh, and what the utility does for example if you have uh, images in a folder um, and uh, if you want to use um, for example uh, gpan uh, enhancement on those images uh, that utility takes those images inside the folder uh, inside the workspace uh, of gpan and uh, it's the input folder let me show you um, on the location So uh, here is my bot files and bot my bot files are working um, here. This is my output folder and this is my input folder. So let's navigate to that, uh, that location. So uh, the utility takes the images uh, to this folder and uh, runs the bot file runs any bot file you, you define uh, and uh, as you can see there, there are lots of bot files in here and i have made them uh, for specific tasks for example this one uses um, 256 uh, resolution model and 512 model and the, the, this is the 2k model and uh, the, 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 they are just um, using different models uh, so uh, the utility takes the images to the input folder and calls a bot file one of these bot files uh, that you will define um, in the Python file and after that uh, this bot file gets launched this bot file gets launched and it enhances the uh, images um, for example uh, this one does the to uh, 56, 56 uh, resolution uh, for the face enhancement and um, the background enhancement model is this one and after the images gets processed uh, it gets output to the uh, output folder which is this one so when the enhancement is done the utility takes 
those images to the source folder. What is the source folder, by the way? And um, I can say any folder in your computer is a source folder uh, that has the images. Uh, and I have made this test uh, folder uh, just to show you how it works. I will send, uh, after showing uh, how you can modify the um, Python file, and uh, I will make a breakdown of the Python file so you can understand how to use it, how to uh, change it, uh, how to change the locations, uh, what parts of the code you need to edit. Uh, so you will have a, uh, you will have an understanding of the uh, Python code and. Uh, so, uh, I was telling about, this is the source folder, uh, and from this source folder, uh, the utility will take those images to the workspace of the GPAN and gets processed, and after that, everything is done, those images that were enhanced by GPAN will be uh, copy to here with a suffix. So, uh, source images and the enhanced images uh, will be next to each other. Uh, and of course, it will have a suffix uh, because it, uh, the files cannot be with the same file name. It will have a suffix um, with the enhancement model or anything you like and uh, we will go uh, from there and I will show you some other uh, Photoshop tricks um, and XMU MP tr tricks and pe people were asking those questions as well so uh, we have a job to do lots of things to do and uh, let's get started uh, after this uh, long info. So let's go to the location of our utility, uh, which I mentioned, and it's in, it should be in here. Uh, and I have already made uh, lots of versions uh, of this file, and I will just copy one of them. And I will make some edits. Let's take this one. Paste. And let's rename it to anything. Uh, that makes sense to us. Um, by the way, this naming is uh, not important, but uh, I rename uh, I name the file uh, as this because uh, it will do a specific job. Uh, for example, uh, this is using 512 resolution model. Uh, that's why. Uh, it's an indication, uh, so you can know which model uh, you are using. Okay, I will keep the uh, file name as is and delete this copy part. Okay, uh, and let's dive into the code. So this is the, let's close the other ones so they do not distract us. Um, so, this Python file uh, has some sections and some comments so people can understand easy, I hope. But um, in case, I, I will explain. This is the uh, data folder and uh 
we will just name it as uh, we, we like. Uh, it doesn't have uh, any effect uh, for the final output, but uh, this is going to be uh, the folder uh, that will keep the information for this Python file uh, to work. So uh, I will just I will show you wh what it will do uh, in the later stage. So um, we will name it uh, like GPAN test. You can name it uh, anything to anything. Okay. So this is the uh, data folder and. In this folder, there will be a txt file, which will have a path txt. Uh, I mean, um, in the path txt, it will store the uh, GPAN location. So uh, when you first run the um, code, this Python file, it will store uh, its location in inside this path txt file. So I will not edit this. This is the the next one is the images location. This is the uh, input location for the GPAN, and uh, I already have the this structure. But uh, for example, if you if you have uh, your images in the input folder and output folder, you can just write it here. So your uh, you have to edit your bot files uh, as well. Uh, just to make it even with this one, because um, let's see. As you can see, it's the same folder. That's why uh, I was using uh, I was using that folder. So they have to be same. Your uh, input and output folder for the bat file. And this is uh, the bat file you will launch. And it has to be with the same name of the bat file. Uh, and Let's try, uh, we will make a 512 enhancement and uh, we can make a forex. So I copy this file name and uh, paste it in here. And Let's save, uh, and this will launch the 4x bot file, and we will not touch uh, these parts, but in case you are wondering, uh, this is um, in PyTorch, some files, um, uh, some file naming, uh, Naming some characters are not acceptable for PyTorch, so it gives error uh, in some images. That's why uh, he has made a function. Um, so any file name, uh, for example, it can have Chinese characters uh, or Japanese characters or whatever. Uh, so uh, it just uh, renames the files 
uh, to be accepted by the PyTorch. And then it goes to the process. So finally, what, what we will edit is this uh, part. Uh, we want uh, a JPEG um, uh, extension for the images, uh, not PNG. Uh, so uh, if, if you want, you can put it PNG, but uh, you need to export PNG from the GPAN as well. So uh, this one will filter JPEG field, uh, files. And since we are using the Forex bot file, I will edit this. This is the suffix, by the way. So the suffix uh, will be like this. This is the model resolution, and this is the GPAN model. And this indicates uh, it's been enhanced uh, four times. And if you are using uh, 2x, you can put it 2x, and you can you can write anything here. Okay, it doesn't matter. This is the suffix part. So it, it goes to the end of the naming. But uh, just to make sense, I'm using this one. So this is the Python file we are going to be using. And I have saved it. So the next part, next part is uh, we will make this an exit file executable file uh, so we can use it uh, from different applications user interface interfaces um, uh, easily that's why uh, i will use a shortcut for this and i will use autopy to uh, Let's make, uh, sorry, let's rename this Forex. And let's make a copy, paste. And let's make a 2x version as well. Why not? So ju just to show how you can modify this file really fast. And uh, in the second one, I will not uh, edit the data folder because it will run from the same folder. Uh, and these are fine, these are fine. I will just uh, change the, uh, I will just change the bot file to be launched. And this will be the tweaks. And I will edit this part as well. So it's done. And uh, let's make executables uh, from Autopy to Exe. Uh, you can find it in GitHub, Autopy to Exe. So when you download it, you will have something like this. And I have made a shortcut. Uh, for for the desktop, when you launch it, you will have a window like this. And uh, when you browse to your location, and uh, this was this was the folder that I was using. So these are the two files. 
we have made. Let's make the tricks first. And we want one file, not one directory. One file here. And uh, optionally, you can use an icon here. If you don't use an icon, uh, it will put something like this. It will use some something like this. But uh, I have already prepared prepared some uh, icons. Um, so these are the files. These are the icon files uh, that I have been using. So this makes more sense. Uh, which model you're using. But uh, in this case, uh, since uh, I am already using uh, these ones, uh, just to show you uh, the different uh, logo, I will use Facebook logo. So you can uh, see those files. After select selecting the logo, we will not touch the other settings and we just press convert to exa. It will not take long. So we were using 2x and let's make another one for the 4x. I will change the uh, icon. This time let's uh, use the WhatsApp logo. Uh, press the clear output and convert Pi to exit. So uh, you can open up the uh, output folder from here. And uh, these are the two files that we were expecting to be here. So let's copy these files. And I am pressing Windows key and R key. And you write shell colon. Sound to. Uh, sorry. Sound to. And then uh, you press OK. It's uh, it opens the sound to uh, folder. Let's paste these uh, new files here. Uh, so uh, from uh, when you copy these executables here uh, you can use uh, you can use the send to menu and you will see these files in here that's why we have copied uh, these exa uh, to two exa files in this location So let's close this one. We we are done with the autopilot to exit. And let's navigate to GPAN location. And when we uh, select one or more files, it doesn't matter from any location. Uh, on your system. It can be in another uh, drive as well. It doesn't matter. Uh, so when you right click, choose Sound to and GPAN 2x. So in the first run, it will ask you for the GPAN Windows folder. So my GPAN is located in C drive here. 
and I will copy. Uh, I have copied that and paste. Press enter. And after that, it will copy the input files to the location and it will launch the uh, 5.12 bot file, whatever. So we will see the results in here and the workspace uh, will be clean after the enhancement so it deletes the input and output folder uh, the files in the output and the input folder after uh, it has done the enhancement we, we will just wait for the images to be processed. Also, um, uh, the uh, enhancement for the first time when the uh, when Japan uh, is first launched, it takes a little bit of more time. Uh, but after that, for the second run, uh, it gets faster. Uh, I think um, it stores. Uh, itself in memory, so uh, the process uh, gets faster. As you can see, the images are next to the enhanced images are next to the source images. Let's have a look. This is the original file. You can see the resolution, and this is the enhanced file. This is the 2x. And this one is Chris Pratt. So let's clean the different results from this folder and uh, let's test the forex And while it's processing, uh, let me show you the other executable files that I have made uh, with this utility. And uh, the, the, these are the uh, other ones, and I have made it for uh, different models. They are calling the diff different bot files. And uh, this one is calling a chained bot file, and uh, it's processing the 512 first, and then uh, calling the uh, 2K model. Uh, and this one is making a double process. And uh, it doesn't have to be GPAN, by the way. Uh, don't get confused uh, that the utility is called GPAN utility, but you can use it um, in any project uh, from GitHub. 
that has an input and output folder. And you can make a bot file uh, in the main folder of that project and call the bot file with this uh, utility. And uh, you show the input and output locations uh, in the Python file, like I showed you before. And uh, it will just take care of it. It can be GFP gun utility. It can be anime gun utility. It can be whatever. Real ESR gun utility. And so on. Uh, so the images gets processed. This is the forex for the JIPA. And uh, as you can see, uh, 512 model is blurring the image uh, on this resolution. What's the reason for that? Okay. Let me explain how, how to use which model. And uh, these are my GPN utility shortcuts and the other ones here. Um, think of this uh, monitor resolution and I am using a full HD monitor and um, it has uh, 1080 pixels vertically. Okay? So, if the image is like This one, it's almost uh, taking space uh, half of my screen. So it's around 512 region. So when you use 512 model, uh, you will not get good results because it will it will reach its limits to uh, deliver the best results. In these cases, if you have enough resolution and enough definition for the face, and the face resolution in your screen space is around this one, it can be also uh, 1K. Uh, so in that case, you shall use the uh, 2K model. And let's go to the first picture. And as you can see, uh, the real resolution uh, of this picture is this one. And if you think about the vertical uh, resolution is 1,080 pixels. Uh, the faces are really small. So you can use the two, uh, 256 model if you want. And you can use the 512 model if you want. You can use the uh, GFP gun. But it depends, uh, the results uh, changes. And uh, in these kind of cases, uh, I like to use chained bot files. So, uh, for example, it first gets processed with uh, 256 model, uh, with 2x, and the, uh, I have get the double resolution and the faces gets larger and some definition and after that I am using 512 and after that 
with 2x and so uh, after double 2x you get 4x and after that for the finishing uh, I'm using uh, 2k model and uh, just to make it simple I have made uh, this double processing one and this uh, for 2x first and 2x uh, after 4x first 2x later and this is the triple one uh, as I mentioned 2x and 2x and 2x uh, it's going for the uh, 8x as a result and the results uh, generally are more satisfying than using just one simple uh, enhancement and sometimes I combine um, GPAN with GFP gun and uh, this version 3 uh, cleans up the faces a little bit more but it doesn't uh, it doesn't keep the identity of the faces uh, but version 2 keeps the identity of the faces but it puts some extra contrast so it depends on your uh, taste and what you expect from your uh, enhancement and also when you're using GPAN you may see some artifacts on the faces this is the forex by the way so some artifacts may appear on the faces Uh, let's lower this resolution to 50. And I will use the GPAN uh, 2X uh, and 2K model for this one just to show uh, the artifacts. generated and I will show you the method uh, with another AI in Photoshop to clean up the artifacts uh, artifact leftovers over the faces so the faces gets clean and you will get uh, more satisfying results but I have to wait and these are calling uh, GPAN from a different folder uh, and different GPAN that's why it will uh, initialize and we have to wait a little bit more because this is the first time I'm launching from a different location. This is for uh, to show you about the artifacts you, you may face. When you when you do your enhancements,
Okay, it's done. And this is the 2K model. Let's zoom in. And you can see these uh, artifacts on the faces. And this doesn't look cool. Lots of artifacts. I have made this one, heal, and um, added to this interface, uh, user interface of XMU MP, and with one click, it will send this file to Photoshop and it will clean all the mess uh, of this GPAN result. But I will show you the longer way in Photoshop. So this is the Photoshop shortcut. This opens the image in Photoshop. So let's zoom in uh, to one of the faces. And I will show you the fastest way with some actions. And I will show you how you can make your own actions. Like uh, I'm going to do in here. So. When I press heal locally, because uh, I have named it like that, as you can see, the artifacts are gone. Let's try another face. This one. The artifacts are gone. Let's try multiple faces, maybe. And you don't have to do this uh, for individual faces uh, like I did it in here. Uh, you can do it for the full image. Um, so if I clean the selection, if I press heal locally, it will try to do the cleanup for the all faces. Sometimes it misses some faces, but it's okay. If that happens, you can always go and clean those faces manually by selecting the region and here locally. So what does this heal locally do? To see uh, that uh, uh, in our actions menu, disable the button mode and uh, go to the action. And as you can see, this is using retouch for me heal. 
and it's a plugin. It's using AI. If I go to the first position uh, of the image, untouched version of the image, when you go to filter and retouch for me, retouch for me heal, it will launch the plugin. And it will show you the cleaned results. And if you press apply, it will apply and clean up your image. So how to make that plugin an action? This is the question. It's easy. So you need to record an action, record a new action. In the actions, so uh, by the way, your actions may be located in here, but I have just put it in here. If you want to record an action for Photoshop, you press the plus icon here and name your action. Um, I will name it Heal My Image. And I will put it in the default actions. I will put some colors like blue and press record. So this action uh, is on the record mode now. Kill my image. So whatever you do in Photoshop gets recorded. And uh, when we go to the filters, go to retouch for me, kill. Apply. This uh, one got recorded, okay? But after that, we also want to save our image. So when we press save, and you can choose whatever you like uh, in the JPEG options, press OK. Also, saving is, record is recorded uh, on my action. So I will press stop to stop recording the action. So I will take this one to top of my list. Here is my action. And it has retouch for me. And it's doing the cleanup and it's saving the image. But if you want to uh, just do the heal and not save the image, because you may want to edit your image and save as an alternative, and not overwriting the image, um, you may want to just use retouch for me and not save. So you don't record the save. And if you record the save, you can delete it. And you can add, press record, go to file and save, and the save gets recorded. 
So in, at this stage, this one does its job uh, in Photoshop, but we want to use it outside of Photoshop and make an executable for this one. So how do we do this? Luckily, we have droplets. And when you go to file, when you go to scripts, uh, sorry, automate, here is create droplet. Droplets uh, will be executable files and it can carry the information that the action has. So if you want to use an action in your droplet, just select it in your list and heal my image I'm going to use. And you can select overwrite, save as commands if you want, and uh, save location. Uh, you can save it to your desktop and name it as heal my image and save it. Press OK. And we can uh, close this picture. This is the uh, executable file. And let's cut it to GPA location. Or you can copy to any place. This is a Photoshop droplet and it has the actions that were defined uh, inside it. And whenever you drop a file, this one, for example, let's have a look again. It has the artifacts. Let's make a copy and let's drag and drop onto the droplet. So this opens the file. It heals the image and it saves the image. So this one shall be the clean results. This copy one. And this is the original with the artifacts. Okay, let's focus on this woman. As you can see, it's cleaner. So after that, uh, of course you can drag and drop to this droplet, but uh, I think it's inefficient uh, to use that. that uh, I mean, you can use it uh, by dragging and dropping images to that droplet. And also you can copy to your uh, center if you want. I have some other droplets in here, but you can also edit at this one and GPAN 
uh, utility shortcuts uh, to your interface. XMU uh, MP interface. And here is how you do it. Also, people have asked a lot about this one. How do you do this? How do you do that? This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. You go to here. This is the toolbar. Right click. Customize the toolbar. And in here, there are two modes. Browser mode and the view mode. Browser mode, browser mode is this one. And the viewer mode is this one. Then you are viewing uh, your images. This is another toolbar. And when you are browsing your images, this is another toolbar. So I have made it twice uh, for the browser and the uh, viewer mode. So right click, customize your toolbar. And here is the most common ones. A separate separator, a new bar, and a command. Uh, first, I want to show you what new bar does. This one. When you put new bar to right with this arrows, you can put it to the left and remove. And when you press the right one, right arrow, uh, it adds to here. When you press OK, it adds a new one in here. OK. And uh, let me show you what the new bar does. This icon is uh, indicating the new bar. And this is a new bar. You can drag. And drop your items as you like. And you can group them. And uh, let's see where the new bar does. And here uh, I put a new bar. And below that, these icons, uh, these shortcuts are in this bar. And Another bar is here, from here to here. This is the second bar. So you can add bars to your toolbar. And you can also add commands. Let's add a new command. Uh, and we press the set command and let's go to our send to location. Because I want to use the new JPEG utilities we have created. This one with the Facebook icon. And you can set a label if you want. Japan 2x with capitals if you want. Let's copy. 
and make the second one. Set the label. And press OK. You cannot see because it's in here. My, my bar is full. If I drag and drop this bar, you can see. So if I press this button, it takes the image and enhances that clean the g pans g -pan enhanced results. And let's delete the heal my image executable. And let's add that as well to our toolbar. Let's add a command. You can uh, put some icon if you want. from these extensions. But I, uh, for this dem demonstration, I will use the default one. So let's try from the uh, XMU MP uh, interface. I will just use one image with the two X. Let's try the 4x one on a different picture. By the way, uh, when you launch uh, something from your command line, it goes, uh, it, it runs uh, in, in a window. Uh, window sized, uh, it's not minimized. So, uh, if you are using these tools, uh, frequently it gets in the way. I mean, it pops up on your screen and you get distracted. So, uh, there is also a solution for that. Uh, here, I'm using a software called Chill Window Minimizer. And uh, I have added lots of uh, programs and executables here. 
And uh, what this does is it's minimizing the windows when they get launched. So it does it automatically, but uh, you need to you need to tell the program to minimize uh, minimize the executables. So I will show that as well as an extra. So you can use this software if you want. And let's try enhancing lots of pictures. And I press this. You can see this program adds uh, some shortcuts. So when you press this uh, uh, icon here, you can create a new specific setting. And you just select minimize window automatically at startup and press OK. That's it. From now on, uh, when the uh, executable gets launched, it will uh, minimize the program automatically for you. Just because some of the images are at high resolution, uh, this super resolution is failed. But it's okay. Uh, I just wanted to select lots of files at once because I want to uh, have enough time to show you this uh, specific setting. So uh, I will do it for the other ones as well. And I, I am doing the cleanup uh, with Photoshop. Uh, also minimized in here. But in this case, I am not minimizing to the taskbar. I am minimizing to here next to the uh, next to the system clock. I will show you the settings for that as well. For example, for Photoshop, uh, it's minimizing at the startup, but the option is not taskbar, just the tray. Okay. If you select it to minimize it to tray, uh, Photoshop gets gets minimized to system tray, not the taskbar. So let's clean up the GPA results again. And Let's do the 4x. Create a new specific settings. Start uh, at startup. Press OK.
By the way, uh, you can use uh, GPAM workspace. just for one model at a time. If you want to use multiple uh, models to be launched at the same time, you need to uh, copy your GPAN to, to another location. So you have two copies uh, and you need to make your GPAN utility uh, to be run at different locations and uh, so you can uh, do your uh, enhancement with this model and this model at the same time if you have enough uh, gpu memory uh, so i mean if you have enough system resources uh, because uh, GPAN input and output folders, uh, if, if they are already processing uh, one or more images, and uh, let, let me explain it this way. If you select these two files and press this one, This one is trying to do its job. And if you press this one at the same time, I have started two copies. And they are trying to copy these files uh, to the folder, input folder. And uh, this will end up, uh, this will not end up uh, good because uh, the program gets confused when you are trying to do multiple things at once. In that case, I will cancel these two. In that case, you need to go to your uh, GPAN input folder. Delete the images, and if if there are uh, other files in here, delete them as well, and uh, start over. You don't want to do uh, two enhancements at the same time, but if you have the resources, uh, you need to copy this GPAN to another. Uh, for example, you can rename it to GPAN2, GPAN3, GPAN4, whatever. And uh, from those locations, you can call other bot files. So in that way, you, you can do multiple enhancements uh, at the same time, if you want. And there is also one more thing uh, I want to show you. Uh, these droplets uh, from the Photoshop file, if you want to use them from the command line, you can do that uh, as well. Uh, for example, I have made a bot file in here. Um, so you can call the heal executable or heal my image executable and put the location that you want to heal your images and file extension and I have used uh, star dot star to include uh, any type of file, it can be PNG, it, it can be JPEGs, uh, whatever format. 
and you can use it that way as well. Also, if you want to combine your um, droplets with GPAN enhancement all in once, you can do this one. So you call your uh, environment, activate your uh, environment, and after that, you are calling uh, GPAN 512 enhancement. And after that, uh, the input folder gets deleted, but the enhanced files uh, from the output gets copied to the input folder back again. And the enhanced files gets deleted from the output folder. After that, you are calling the GPAN uh, 2K to re-enhance the enhanced images back again. And after that finishes, you are calling your droplet file and that droplet file goes through all images in the output folder and cleans that those artifacts and after that of course if you are calling this bot file from the gpan utility and those images gets back to the source folder uh, with a suffix with everything done everything uh, clean up cleaned up uh, so you get the best results this way but uh, I must warn you, this is a time consuming uh, process because you are enhancing with two models back to back and you are making a short pass to clean up. So it's up to you uh, if you want to use this kind of method. But I just wanted to show you how you can uh, mix things up. This is so powerful, uh, in my opinion. And uh, sometimes I use this one. And finally, uh, before I forgot, um, uh, go to Seos Kosos page. Uh, his name is Claudio. And you can follow him, uh, and he has other repositories as well. They are very useful. He is very creative uh, on uh, making different utilities. And his latest one is this dataset creator, which I like a lot. Uh, and he also has. Uh, GPAN for Windows, and this one is in the official page of GPAN. He is uh, updating the code uh, all the time. And uh, you can put stars in his repositories to give your support. And you can donate him uh, if you want. And that's it. I know it has been a long video, uh, but uh, people have uh, asked uh, a lot of questions uh, on the comments, and I wanted to answer them all uh, in a video. Uh, that's why it has taken uh, too much time. Uh, to explain everything in a single video. But uh, I hope this video helps you. And um, if you like the video, uh, press the like button and 
Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, uh, I would really appreciate uh, your subscription. And that's it. Thanks for watching.